Hello, my name's Nikki, and it's great to be sharing another thought for the day with you in this parish. So I'm going to read a short passage from John chapter 15, verses 18 to 25. And it's all about the world hating Jesus and the disciples. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belonged to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember what I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. They will treat you in this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father as well. If I had not done among them the works no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen, and yet they have hated both me and my father. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. So just to set the context, um, we're still in the upper room and Jesus has taught the disciples just now about remaining in the vine and how important and crucial that teaching would be to sustain the disciples going forward to remain solidly in the vine. Um, but now Jesus starts to warn his disciples of the hostilities which lie ahead of them. They have a really important job to do. They're going to be God's fruit bearing people. But the world is now turning against Jesus and his followers. But perhaps if the disciples realise that this hostility is against Jesus and that Jesus has also already experienced this hatred, maybe that will better equip the disciples to persevere and to remain in Jesus' vine. But aren't we left after this, after this passage with such a negative view of the world? And it's interesting that earlier in John's Gospel, Jesus speaks of the world in a much more positive light. The world, earlier in the Gospel, um, was the object of God's love into which he sent Jesus. And of course we know that Jesus is the saviour of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. But at this point in the Gospel, Jesus is feeling this persecution and he's feeling rejection by the people around him. So the phrase, the world, now takes on a very negative meaning. The phrase now describes the human structures, if you like, which are opposing God, Jesus and his followers. During the, these verses, the world is being portrayed as hating and opposing Jesus until finally Jesus tells Pilate, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. And this passage that we've read today is such an important reminder for us that of course persecution continues in so many countries in this world. And it's a reminder to us of the constant and the real dangers faced by so many Christians um, across the world. And I think it's a good passage to remind us of the fantastic charity Open Doors. And if you hadn't, haven't had a look at their website recently, I'd really encourage you to take some time to go and have a look. It is a really, really sobering read, um, but really important that we should be aware of what is going on in other countries around the world. They've got a top 10 list of the countries in the world, um, the worst places to live for Christians. And Afghanistan, which we've heard so much about in the news recently, um, is said to be the second most dangerous place for Christians to live. They say it's impossible to live openly as a Christian in Afghanistan. Leaving Islam is considered shameful 
and Christians face dire consequences if their faith is discovered. Either they have to flee the country or they will be killed. Open Doors reports there being around 340 million Christians around the world who are persecuted and discriminated um, for their faith. That's 340 million Christian brothers and sisters. It's a horrifying reality. But of course, it's a reality that faced Jesus and his disciples. And it really brings home how lucky we are in this country to be able to express our faith without fear of violent, dangerous consequences. So we really must thank God for this freedom in which we live in this country. And we really must keep praying and asking for opportunities to share our faith with those around us. And at this time, it's obviously key to continue to pray for those Christians living overseas who are living in such different circumstances from us and live in fear um, for their own lives and those of the people that they love. So do have a look at Open Doors. There are opportunities to pray for specific um, countries and um, suggestions of how else we can support these um, Christian brothers and sisters of ours living in other countries. Amen. <laughs>